LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, lift off conditions looking pretty good. ESTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten, nine, eight. Side booster ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Falcon 9 is in startup. Here's the call out. We're in startup. We're now pressurizing first and second stage tanks for flight. LD countdown net, go for launch. There we go. The final call to SpaceX launch director is given to go for launch. We're at T minus 35 seconds and counting. All systems are go. T minus 30 seconds. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Engine. Lift off. Supersonic, we're coming through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Equal has reached maximum aerodynamic pressure. Guidance engineer confirms we're through the period of greatest pressure on the vehicle. Continuing downrange, trajectory looks good. Propulsion looks good. Avionics looks good. And back chill has started. That announcement from stage two propulsion. We are now beginning to chill in the turbo pump on the upper stage engine to get ready for its ignition coming up in about 45 seconds. Nice view from the SpaceX cameras at Cape Canaveral as we head east of Space Launch Complex 40 into the first of two orbits planned for today. This orbit is the parking orbit, a low Earth orbit uh, trajectory that will take us uh, over the equator and will eventually relight the upper stage engine to transfer us into the desired geostationary transfer orbit. Now main engine cutoff, or MECO, coming up in several seconds, followed by pneumatic separation. The first stage pushes away from the second stage, and then ignition of the second stage engine. Stage Mika. separation confirmed. Miko on time. Stage up looks good. And the call out, MVAC D engine is at full power. The view on the left screen, you can see the large titanium grid fins now slowly opening. That begins about a two minute period as we slowly rotate the first stage around to get it ready to come back through the atmosphere and land on the drone ship in the Atlantic off the east coast of Florida. Right hand side, second stage engine glowing red. That's normal for the MVAC D. 
trajectory. Trajectory is nominal, we've heard from the guidance engineer. Great views coming from space. We're coming up on fairing deploy. Fairing separation confirmed. And we've heard the call out from the avionics engineer. Fairing separation is confirmed. I think you can see in the background behind the MVAC D nozzle, uh, one half of the fairing way in the distance uh, as it went past the camera. So right now we're coming up four minutes into flight. Trajectory is looking excellent. We're right down the middle of the road. Power on the upper stage engine is good. Bermuda is now getting the telemetry from the Falcon 9, and we're getting great views from space at T plus four minutes and 13 seconds. For those of you just joining us, we had a successful liftoff of our Falcon 9 rocket at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time uh, from Cape Canaveral. Uh, on the right-hand side of your screen, our second stage, uh, its engine is glowing as we continue to take the Anasys 2 satellite payload to its desired orbit. Uh, on the left-hand side, our first stage, we're beginning, to, uh, we're beginning our recovery attempt on our drone ship uh, out in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, the next milestones coming up include that first stage's entry burn, followed by the second stage engine cutoff, known as SECO-1, uh, the first stage landing burn, and then that hopeful landing. The entry burn will occur at about six and a half minutes after liftoff. And what you don't see pictured here are those two fairing halves. They've been jettisoned, uh, and it will take some time for them to get down to, uh, to sea level. So we won't be covering uh, on the webcast that recovery attempt status, but stay tuned on social media for updates. You see some pretty clear pictures of Earth there. Uh, the first stage has reached Apogee. It's beginning to head down there. Uh, we're only going to be firing three of our Merlin engines during this entry burn in order to slow the vehicle down before it gets to the thicker parts of Earth's atmosphere. It'll slow the vehicle by about 25%. Uh, when we perform uh, stage separation, uh, that first stage was traveling about two and a half kilometers per second. So we have a lot of velocity to reduce. and we're just under 30 seconds from that entry burn beginning. It's gonna last about 24 seconds. We're 10 seconds away from entry burn. Hopefully we'll be able to hear that call out and have visual confirmation that burn's begun. Stage one, entry burn startup. Our entry burn has begun. You'll see that, that uh, the exhaust there will grow and start to become elliptical as we turn on the engines. The center engine fires first, the two side engines fire shortly after that. So that exhaust will seem to grow during this burn. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. All right, one burn down, one to go. That's the landing burn. Uh, it'll occur in about one minute from now, along with uh, the next milestone, uh, the second stage engine cutoff or SECO-1. Uh, that'll be at T plus eight minutes, seven seconds. Uh, during SECO-1, we shut down the second stage MVAC engine on the right-hand side of the screen. Also signal first stage, Cape Canaveral expected. In about 25 seconds after SECO-1, Falcon 9 will touch down, hopefully, on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Uh, currently, it's in the Atlantic, uh, about 350 nautical miles off the coast of Florida. Start of terminal guidance. And in terms of velocity of that first stage, uh, drag alone is slowing the first stage down another 80%. That landing burn will take us back, that get that last 20%, touch us down safely. Just under 10 seconds from landing burn and Seco 1. Seco. Stage 1, landing burn, start up. We have confirmation of both landing burn and SECO-1. We're waiting confirmation of a good orbital insertion for that Anasys-2 satellite. Stage 1, there it is. That is our 
57th successful landing of a Falcon 9 on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. While we were watching that landing, we also had confirmation of nominal orbit insertion. Uh, we're all pretty excited over here at SpaceX for being able to use this uh, first stage for a third time coming up. Uh, but going back to our primary mission on the second stage, uh, it's going to coast for about 18 minutes until we cross the equator where we perform the second of two burns of the upper stage to help change the orbit. Uh, we're going to take a break until then. We're going to leave you with a map of where we are in the mission. We'll be back at uh, about T plus 26 minutes for the second burn of our MVAC engine. Also signal Bermuda as expected. Welcome back, John Insperker here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. It's T plus 26 minutes. In about 30 seconds, we're going to get relight of the upper stage engine called second engine start number two, actually second stage engine start number two, or SES2. Now this burn will be a little more than uh, 55 seconds. 
and that'll carry us into the transfer orbit, and hopefully we'll be able to bring you a view of the engine burn as it gets going. From the map, you can see we're just about to cross the equator. That's where you do an inclination change that's most efficient. We've got ignition on the upper stage engine, and propulsion engineer calls out that the ignition looks good. We're up at power. Now, currently, when we went into the burn, we were at a low Earth orbital speed of about 7.4 kilometers per second. This burn, just under a minute long, is going to add another 2.5 kilometers per second to that velocity. That's what it'll take to get the satellite and the second stage into the geostationary, geosynchronous transfer orbit. We're throttling down, getting ready to shut down the engine. Seco 2. Seco 2 confirming the second stage engine cutoff number two. Now we're going to wait and listen for guidance to tell us how the orbit looks. And we haven't heard guidance engineer call out, but looking at the data plots that we've got from nominal vehicle telemetry, trip. we've got a nominal orbit. So we are into the desired geostationary transfer orbit. The Falcon 9 second stage with the Anasys 2 spacecraft still attached. We're now going to go through a period of about three and a half minutes where we prepare to separate the Anasys 2 satellite we're going to take another quick back break, and we'll be back at T plus 32 minutes for satellite deploy. Plus 32 minutes. It's been a great mission so far. Falcon 9 lifted off. We had a 30 minute weather delay because we had a little bit of a shower band go by uh, the trajectory. Uh, but when we launched, had great skies. We had great views from first stage and second stage. Saw the first stage land on the drone ship. We've done the two burns of the upper stage engine. Both of them were nominal. But right now we're getting ready for the big event, which is spacecraft separation. And as a reminder, we won't see payload deploy today per the customer's request. So we're going to listen in for the avionics engineer to call it. Payload separation confirmed. And there it is. Avionics engineer calls. Payload separation has deployed, confirming that via telemetry. And so 32 minutes, 49 seconds into flight. That's the camper. We've done the primary mission. We've brought the first stage back to the drone ship. It's been a great day. Took a little while getting here but uh, well worth it with a totally successful mission today. And also that's successful payload separation expected. that will end our coverage for today. Uh, we want to say thank you to Lockheed Martin and the Republic of Korea for entrusting us with today's flight. Also, a special thanks goes out to the 45th Space Wing for range support and to the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing support. And of course, thank you for watching. Have a good night.